Um, the, reason I can't, the reason I can't drive is because I'm actually terrified of driving because I know the intelligence level of new drivers on the road because I went to school with them. There's a guy called Maz that I had GCSE history with and we had a teacher who was really great and she'd always throw out bits of trivia to try and get us interested in the subject. And she said, for example, did you know that Martin Luther King and Anne Frank were born in the same year? I didn't know that. Quite interesting, right? Now Maz puts his hand up, no hint of irony in his voice, just goes, did they know each other? <laughs> yeah, Maz, yeah, they were pen pals. <laughs> But I'd love to see the roles reversed. I'd love to see Martin Luther King's diary, because I don't actually think it'd be as interesting as you'd think. It'd just be full of things like, Tuesday, had another dream. <laughs> In this one, I had trombones for legs. <laughs> I don't think I should include this one in the speech, for I think it would rather detract from my point. <laughs> For some reason, I seem to be sounding more and more like Forrest Gump. <laughs> so I'm 20, and um, I've developed this sort of preoccupation that I think a lot of young men my age develop, which is that I'm sort of terrified that I'm becoming my father, which I think is quite valid. Um, <laughs> my dad is the biggest cynic, the biggest pessimist you will ever meet. He's never been happy, and I don't think I will either, because I had a dream the other night where I woke up and I was on a beautiful desert island, tropical paradise, sun was shining, abundance of coconuts behind me, all I could have ever wanted. All I did in the dream was go, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> There's no bloody sun cream. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna burn. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've never been more relieved to wake up in an annex in Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I basically just wish I could be as carefree as my little cousin Aston, right? Because my little cousin Aston, the only thing he has on his mind is why does Louis keep getting the good packs of Alpha Veggie spaghetti? Doesn't mean anything to you, doesn't mean anything to his parents. It means something to me though because I got tasked with looking after him over the summer and he is the worst person I've ever met. <laughs> I should preface, he is seven. <laughs> He got sent home from school for pushing a boy over and saying, if you've got a problem, my cousin Louis will do you in. <laughs> Which I don't think I could do. I'm not a tough guy in case the hand hadn't given it away. <laughs> the toughest thing I ever did, right, was I once stole blister plasters from Boots. Because I couldn't be bothered to queue. Because I was about to miss the first half of Mamma Mia. <laughs> with my parents. <laughs> Not the play, the film. I stole four pounds worth of product from Boots so that Piers Brosnan could rob me of nine pound fifty. <laughs> but, um, so basically, what, what it is, the reason why he, he's got alphabetic to get in his mind is because this is a prank that I recommend if anyone's got any young siblings or nephews or anyone significantly younger than them that they hate. Um, what I did is I got him really into Alphabetti Spaghetti. He loved the stuff, his spelling was really coming along. And then, all I had to do was start giving him spaghetti hoops, which he doesn't know exist. But all I have to do is every time I plonk it in front of him on the table, I just go, it's a dud pack today, Aston, just doze. <laughs> As I tuck into my plethora of tomato -y letters, going, this one spells revenge. <laughs> Oh, actually, it's a bit cold. <laughs> but I do take solace in knowing that because he is one of our family, because he's a Kamel, he is guaranteed to be a very, very awkward child. And I basically can't wait till he starts doing the thing that I used to do when I was a kid, which was, I thought this was a normal thing until I started doing these gigs and I realised no one has a clue what I'm going on about. I used to temporarily lose my mum in the supermarket and then in blind panic look for the first woman who looked remotely like my mum and just grab her hand. <laughs> And remember the first time I did that, I was about eight years old. And it's because I got cocky, right? My mum said, come on, Louis, let's go do the shopping. I said, no, mother, you know what I like. I'm going to look at the DVDs. <laughs> and I did my browsing, and I went out to the aisle. I saw the first woman who looked remotely like my mum. Ryan grabbed her hand, looked up, wasn't my mum. Now, not a big deal. This woman was lovely. She knew exactly what had happened. She probably had kids of her own. She said, come on, let's go find your mum. So we walked around for a bit. I saw my mum. We ran. I grabbed my mum's hand, looked up. This woman also was not my mum. <laughs> I've invented the double whammy. 
I'm suspended between these two women like some sort of camping bag that they've each had to take their hands along. To make matters worse, my mum then clocks me from the other side of the show. <laughs> I'm so happy to see her. All I could think to do is smile. I'm stood there like this. <laughs> I just picked up two Tesco value escorts. <laughs> so that is something that I'm looking forward to Aston finding out about. So thank you, I've been Luke Amell, enjoy your night.